The time having arrived of 7.02 p.m., we call this meeting of the Brockton School Committee to order, and we will immediately take a recess uh, so that we can participate in the Student Award Recognition Ceremony next door. We anticipate an, a recess of about one hour. We will reconvene back here in the Little Theater for tonight's School Committee meeting to continue at approximately 8 p.m. Thank you, meeting is recessed. Well, good evening, everyone, and thank you uh, for joining us for this uh, very special recognition ceremony this evening, uh, where we will celebrate the accomplishments of our students in the Brockton Public Schools. Uh, on behalf of the school committee and the superintendent, I have to tell you that this is uh, one of our favorite events of the year, uh, as we truly get a chance to recognize uh, the achievements of our young people. And I think that uh, the young people that you will see here receiving awards this evening represent what's best about Brockton and represent the future of our city. At this time, I would like to ask everyone to join me in standing for the presentation of colors by the Brockton High School JROTC. At this time, I'll ask uh, everyone to please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We ask everyone to please remain standing as the colors are posted on stage. Now please be seated. Well, this evening we will recognize our students that are high performers. Uh, these young people have exceeded athletically, academically, in citizenship, and it's a, it's a distinct honor to be part of this uh, recognition ceremony. 
Uh, we are joined here this evening to my left by the members of the school committee who will join us in uh, congratulating each of the awardees. At this time, it's my distinct pleasure to introduce the superintendent of schools for the Brockton Public Schools, Kathleen Smith. Good evening, everyone. Thank you, Mayor Carpenter. This indeed is a wonderful evening for all of us in the Brockton community. And I do have to say before I start, as the mayor just mentioned, uh, over to my left is our school committee. And they, along with our mayor, have made sure that we are able to enjoy an evening like this, to make sure we enjoy the athletes and are proud of their accomplishments, our students on the stage, our students with music, the arts, and especially our scholars and the academic achievements of all of our students. So I do want you to join me when you think of the hours upon hours that your elected officials have given to make sure that Brockton remains a number one urban district, able to provide all of these opportunities for our students. So I'd like to have them stand. I'd like Ward 2, Lisa Plant, please. I'm sorry, but Ward 2. Ward 3, uh, Mark D'Agostino. Ward 4, Brett Gormley. Ward 5, Judy Sullivan. Ward 6, Joyce Azak. And Ward 7, Tim Sullivan. Parents, uh, what can we say? I can see it on your faces as I stand here, how proud you are of your students. And I'm sure it was a lot of hard work from the time they were little, encouraging them, wherever their talents were, wherever their strengths were, to really achieve those goals, whether they be personal goals or team goals. And as we sit here today, you know, we, the Brockton community, are so proud of everything that you have been able to do. Every time as superintendent I come in and it's another award and it's glorious when we hear about our youngsters placing nationally in music, our drama uh, spring musical just receiving I believe over nine awards for best awards. Um, looking at our athletes, this year we had a world class or world, excuse me, state champion, they are world class, but state championship uh, soccer team and so many of our other sports. Our students that score the highest levels on the MCAS test throughout the state. Our students who excel in all of their subject areas, and you will hear those awards being given out tonight. So thank you so much for this partnership, a partnership with your elected officials, with all of your teachers and your advisors, and most importantly, our parents and our awardees tonight. We are so proud of you students. Congratulations to each and every one of you. And I would like to invite uh, Associate Principal John Lynch uh, to come up, and I believe we will begin um, with our first group of awards this evening. Good evening. It is my, uh, my pleasure to announce the results of the New England Math League contest. For the 36th consecutive year, students uh, from the Brockton Public Schools have placed in the results of the 6th, 7th, and 8th grade contest score summary report. As in the past, this year's competition included students from various public schools and private schools throughout Massachusetts and New England. Each school that participated in the uh, contest submitted the top five individual scores and a team score. The contest consists of 35 challenging math problems that must be completed in 30 minutes, and these are not easy problems. The Math League con uh, considers 15 correct answers a good score. I extend my congratulations to each student as well as their teachers for a job well done. Special congratulations are extended to the following school teams and students. So for grade six, Brockton's sixth grade team from the Plouffe came in second place in Barnstable, Bristol, and Plymouth County competition with a team score of 109. First, we have Julian uh, Champagne. Julian also got a third place score overall uh, in the Barnstable, Bristol, and Plymouth County New England Math League. He scored a 24. Francis Purdall. <laughs> Next, we have Francis Purdall. Matthew McQuarrie. Olivia Doyle, 
Nelliani Warriors, Kimberly Matthew, Joshua DeMello. For East Middle School, the team got fourth place in Barnstable, Bristol, and Plymouth Counties with a score of 90, and that includes Thomas Madden, Jacob Bunting, Nicholas Capardi, Elizabeth Ho, Wenwu Wakoi, For grade seven, Brockton's uh, seventh grade team from the Plough came in second place for Barnstable, Bristol, and Plymouth County uh, competition with a score of 100. There are multiple students here who had tie scores as well. <laughs> Hannah Zuckerman, Anthony Reiser, Zaire Andrade, Elaine Kayer, Daryl Confident, Alexis Flanagan, Peter Johnson, Ngozi Nuosu, Michael Pham, and Sophia, uh, Sophia Shelley Wass. Brockton's seventh grade team from North came in third place in Barnstable, Bristol, and Plymouth County with a competition score of 90. Monica Trin, <laughs> Melanin uh, Melendez, uh, sorry, Menendez, <laughs> Kalia Clark, <laughs> Denasia Amato. Atriel Arroyo and Ashley Robbins. The team from Ashfield got fourth place in Barnstable, Bristol, and Plymouth County competition with a score of 81. Ayanna Blake, Michael Moon, Matthew Turco, Owen LaCara, and Shayna Feeney. For grade eight, Brockton's eighth grade team from the Plough came, Plough came in second place in Barnstable, Bristol, and Plymouth County with a uh, team score of 106. The first two students uh, also scored third place uh, in the entire region, so that is Michael Palaza. Alexis Dos Santos, uh, sorry, Alex Dos Santos. Alexis Waugh. James Davis. Alice Watt. Ashfield Middle School grade eight team came in third place in Barnstable, Bristol, and Plymouth County competition with a score of 92. Evan Lobo, Jalen DeRosa, Justin Foster, Paul Chapman, Jelani DeJesus, Madeline Miller. Last but not least, North Middle School's uh, grade eight team tied with the Ashfield School for third place in Barnstable, Bristol, and Plymouth County with a score of 92. Charles Doe. <laughs> Destiny uh, Alea Gonzalez. Aleda Car uh, Cardozo. Michael Gideon. And Zelino Martins.
It is now my pleasure to introduce Michelle Connors, the Associate Principal at East Middle School, who will present the awards for the students who earned uh, the Massachusetts Regional Middle School Science Fair. Good evening. The Southeastern Massachusetts Regional Science Fair was held Saturday, April 21st, 2018, at Regis College in Weston, Massachusetts. 28 students from five middle schools in Brockton earned a spot at the regional contest and represented us well. Three projects earned an honorable mention, and one project earned second place. Grade seven, Olivia Spadia from Cliff Academy, honorable mention. Our dynamic duo of Ayana Hunter and Jasmine DePina, grade eight, Cliff Academy, honorable mention. Renee Long, grade eight, Cliff Academy, honorable mention. And grade eight, Andrew Bowen, West Middle School, second place. On Saturday, June 2nd, these students also participated in the Massachusetts State Science Fair, where Olivia Spadia also won an honorable mention. And not with us tonight, but Kaya Rodriguez, a grade seven student from South Middle School, not only took home the second place trophy, the Optical Society Award, and has also been nominated to submit an application to the very prestigious and very competitive Broadcom Masters National Competition. And now it is my privilege to introduce Dr. Ethan Cancel, who will present the awards for students who achieved perfect scores on the statewide MCAS assessment. <laughs> uh, good evening, everyone. I want to thank the mayor, the superintendent, and the school committee for honoring this incredible achievement. I also want to pause here. I, everyone who knows me knows I like to do research, and I did a little research. And I wanted to look at what are factors that influence students' high achievement. And one of the things that I found was parent and family support. So I want to thank every parent and family member here, not just for the folks who achieved this incredible perfect MCAS score, but for all of the Brockton students, thank you so much. It turns out this is a very, very important factor, and we cannot do it without you. So thank you for that. So to continue on our merry way tonight, this is a real accomplishment. MCAS is the hardest state test in the country. Massachusetts regularly outperforms every other state year after year. They kicked up the level of difficulty of MCAS this past year. These students received a perfect score on a new and much more rigorous MCAS, so it really is a phenomenal achievement. I want to thank all the teachers who supported the students. I want to thank their classmates. This is a phenomenal accomplishment, and without further ado, I'd like to introduce the students. Representing the Angelo School, these are for last year's scores. I want to point that out. They just took MCAS this year, but these are for last year's scores. Representing the Angelo School for his grade four perfect score in math, Franklin Chen. <laughs> Representing the Raymond School for grade three, Nathan Mackey. And from Plouffe Academy for grade seven, Alex Dos Santos, perfect score in math. Now we shift subject areas to ELA. The math I think is actually easier because there's either a right math answer or a wrong one, but the ELA, I don't know anyone can get this one right, but we have three students who got it perfectly 
perfect score. Here we start with representing the Kennedy School in fourth grade for last year, Naomi Yemi Castillo. <laughs> representing the Hancock School from last year in grade three, Julia Lay. And from, from the Angelo School, last year, fifth grade, Ella Silverman. Now we shift subject um, areas to science. Representing the Hancock School in fifth grade, Enrique Lugo Staley, perfect score, MCAS science. From Brockton High School, Ariana Dukran. Also rep representing the high school, Taina Rico. Timothy Kulas also received a perfect score, but he is not able to attend. Now I'd like to introduce my colleague, Dr. Julian Andrade, for the results of the spelling bee. Good evening, and thank you for being with us tonight. Before I start, I'd like to acknowledge Mrs. Susan O'Connell from the Kennedy School and also from the Little Red Schoolhouse Association. Eileen and I have worked with her for many years for the Spelling Bee, and she's retiring this year. So I'd like to thank her for all her help in the past. So, each spring, students in grades three to eight in all the Brockton public schools, private and parochial schools, square off in the Little Red Schoolhouses Association annual spelling bee. Each contestant has won a grade-wide spelling bee to represent their school, and the winners of the citywide bee are awarded a prize from local sponsors. We are pleased with their excellent performance of our young spellers this year. I am happy to announce the first place winners of each grade spelling competition. Here are the 2018 Elementary Citywide Spelling Bee winners. For third grade, first place, Axel Sanford, George School. Congratulations, there you go. Grade four, first place, Ailish Lavelle, Angelo School. Grade five, first place, Katerina Lazat, Trinity Catholic Academy. Great job. And now, it's my privilege to introduce Eileen McQuaid. She is the associate principal for the Ashfield Middle School and the alternative schools. She is also the content lead for ELA in the middle schools. Eileen will present the awards for the Little Red Schoolhouse Association Citywide Spelling Bee for grades six to eight. Good evening and thank you. I'm pleased to announce the winners of the grades six, seven, and eight spelling competition um, for 2018. Uh, this is held at the Little Red Schoolhouse every year, and it's a super tough competition. Uh, the kids work so hard. It's a real nail biter. We're so happy that um, so many people from the school committee come to help us out and moderate, and um, it's just a wonderful tradition in the city. So our winner for grade six is um, uh, Ava Hamilton, and she's from the Davis School. And let's give her a round of applause, even though she's not here. And then our first place winner for grade seven is from Pluff Academy. Let's hear it for Damian Lewis. <laughs> and for 
grade eight, unable to be here tonight, first place winner of the Spelling Bee is Renee Long from Pluff Academy. Where is he? Oh, he's here, everybody. <laughs> He must have been sitting with another category. Good for you, Renee, congratulations. Okay, it's my privilege to introduce uh, Ms. Jamie Esty. She's the Associate Principal of West Middle School and the Content Lead for Social Studies 6 to 8. She'll present the awards for the Regional National History Day competition for 2018. Ms. Esty. Good evening. It is my pleasure to present to you the distinguished junior winners of the Regional National History Day competition for 2018. We are so proud of the Brockton Middle School students who represented their city so well. I would like to thank the teachers who participated and worked so hard to make the program such a great success and who have nurtured these students and their growing abilities. Please join me in recognizing these wonderful young history scholars. For junior individual exhibit, third place, Renee Long, from Cliff Academy. <laughs> also for Junior Individual Exhibit, Honorable Mention, Alisa Arzano from Cliff Academy. <laughs> for Junior Group Exhibit, Honorable Mention, Caleb Allison, and Anderson Vieira Barros, Miles Ribeiro from Cliff Academy. Third place, Layla Mutamid, Ayana Hunter, Kalija Lewis from Pliff Academy. For first place for junior group exhibit, Ellen Arustamaya, Jaslyn Depina, Erica Fernandez, Ashley Goncals from Pliff Academy. For junior group documentary, honorable mention, Rakeem Johnson, Katherine Phillips, Kyle Gildner, Gisela Gomes, and James Dragonetti from West Middle School. For junior individual performance, first place, Nicholas Canal from West Middle School. I would also like to present to you Brockton's winner in the state national history competition, who is also heading to the national competition in Washington, D.C., Nic Nicholas Canal. <laughs> For junior historical paper, third place, Nico Lutz. Uh, his sister, Annika, is accepting the award on his behalf. And he was from Cliff Academy. Sorry, I forgot to mention that. Uh, for junior historical paper, honorable mention, Ayanna Gomes Brady from West Middle School. And also honorable mention, Autumn Griffith from West Middle School. For junior individual website, third place, Alicia McGibbon from West Middle School. Third place, Jonathan Cohen from West Middle School. And second place, Cassidy Dickinson from West Middle School. And for first place for junior group exhibit, Hawa Sidibe Anjai for, from Cliff Academy. And junior group performance, first place, Clarence Tessier, James Davis, and Casey Tan from Cliff Academy. And second place, Alexander Kushta, Ayrton Silva, and Joseph Lobo from West Middle School, who are unable to be here tonight. And it is now my privilege to introduce Brockton High School Coordinator of Foreign Languages, 6 through 12, Rachel Umbriana, who will present the awards for the Massachusetts History Day contest in place of Social Science Department Head, Dr. Emily Flores, who was unable to join us.
Each year, thousands of students across the country take part in the National History Day competition, which challenges students to become experts in a historical topic of their choice. Students in grades 7 through 12 competed in the paper, performance, documentary, website, and exhibit categories, sharing their knowledge and analysis of historical events uh, before a panel of educators who judge their presentations, knowledge, and research abilities. Places indicate where they finished in the, at the regional contest. For the senior group exhibit, third place, Juliette Nuoso and Josie Pierre. And both Juliet and Josie uh, were awarded the Frederick Douglass Bicentennial Award, which was given on June 2nd in Roxbury as well. I will also be presenting the Science Awards. It's my honor to present a certificate of appreciation to a student who has truly achieved high honors in science. Francesca Damare, who earned three separate certificates, won third place at the Massachusetts State Science and Engineering Fair for her project using light to measure water quality in lakes and streams. At the MSSEF, Francesca also won the following three prizes the 2018 Cabot Corporation $125 Science and Technology Award, the 2018 Prentice Hall Book Award, and the 2018 MIT Educational Studies Program Award. In addition to this, Francesca also won a $5,000 award from the Marjo Foundation to fund academic research this summer in which she will use PCR on individual pollen grains to investigate bees and pollination. Congratulations, Francesca. And now I am happy to present the National Latin Awards. Latin students at North, South, and West Middle Schools, as well as Brockton High School, participated in this year in the National Latin Exam. This exam is given each March to approximately 148,000 students worldwide. Students from all 50 states participate, as well as 13 foreign countries. This year, Brockton Latin students participated in the exam at five different levels. I'd like to take the opportunity to thank the students for their participation in the exam and to thank the teachers for all their hard work to prepare our students to succeed on these exams. The Foreign Language Department is very proud of each of you. From Brockton High School, Samira Caban, Latin II, magna cum laude. <laughs> Faduma Guled, Latin II, cum laude. Antonio Melberg, Latin III, cum laude. And Esther Aragoke from Latin V, cum laude. From North Middle School, Karina Perez, Latin I, magna cum laude. From West Middle School, Kyle Gildner, Latin I, silver maxima cum laude. Millie Van, Latin One, Silver Maxima Cum Laude. Thomas Pham, Latin One, Magna Cum Laude. Lauren Westerland, Latin One, Cum Laude. Catherine Phillips, Latin One, Cum Laude. Nicholas Canal, Latin One, Cum Laude. Jusela Gomes, Latin One, Cum Laude. Anika de Grace, Latin One, Cum Laude. And from South Middle School, Niliana Gomes, Latin One, Magna Cum Laude. And Iangi Isidore, Latin One, Magna Cum Laude. And now I give you music direct director, Vincent Macrina, who will present the Allstate Music Festival Awards. The Brockton High School is well known throughout the state and the country for high quality of its musicians, both instrumentally and choral members. 
This year, the Music Educators Association has, it gives the students the opportunity to perform with the best students in the state of Massachusetts in four, four different ensembles. Um, if you think how many high schools there are, how many kids perform in music, to make this group is absolutely unbelievable. This year, we're very, very proud of the number of students that we've had, and then kind of I'm real sad to say that 10 of our students missed it by one point. Uh, very tough. But next, they already start practicing for next year on this one here. So anyway, it gives me a great pleasure to present us the students that represented Brockton High School at the Allstate Music Festival, uh, Macaulay Bercy. Dominic DeAndre. Craig Young, who was not able to be here this evening. Jade Etienne. Mantia Gongpala. John Perdal, and Mark Belson. <laughs> These students represented us with the uh, the All State Choral uh, Ensemble, and um, the next person uh, performed has been there for three years performing for the, with, a jazz, with the All-State Jazz Ensemble, Ryan Shaw. Hold on. And I might just want to add that Ryan just received the nationally recognized award of the Louis Armstrong Jazz Award. And now it gives me the I get pleasure to introduce the art director, Sarah Richard, who will present the All-State Scholastic Art Awards. Good evening. The Brockton Public Schools Fine Art Department is pleased to announce that 13 students from the high school and two students from North Middle School have won 15 honors in the 2018 Scholastic Art art and writing competitions. These awards re recognize the hard work, dedication, and talent of the students and the teachers of the Brockton Public School Art Department. Our students continue to represent the city well and inspire others with their creativity. From North Middle School, Keilani De Cavallo, Gold Key Printmaking. <laughs> also from North Middle School, Kayla Tavares, Honorable Mention Drawing. <laughs> From Brockton High School, Valerie Dahonet, Gold Key and a National Silver Medal in Painting. <laughs> Angela Gordini, Gold Key and a National Gold Key in Painting. Stanley Luce, Gold Key Painting. Silvano Sanchez, Honorable Mention Painting. Benjamin McCoy, Gold Key and Two Silver Keys Drawing. Jennifer Dan, Silver Key Drawing. Alyssa Texera, Silver Key Drawing. Simon Schutz, Silver Key Photography, and Zeus Lujaris, Gold Key Ceramics. <laughs> Diana Chuna, Honorable Mention Printmaking, and Elizabeth Williams, Honorable Mention Printmaking. <laughs> cool Science. Two of our Brockton High School art students have been awarded honorable mentions for their artwork in the University of Massachusetts Lowell Cool Science Art Competition. Annika Lux. <laughs> and Brandon Ubesi.
the UMass Dartmouth Emerging Young Artist Show. Artwork by three of our students was selected to be shown in the CVPA UMass Dartmouth juried 2018 Emerging Young Artist Exhibition. This exhibition calls for, call for artists drew over 800 entries. 66 pieces were chosen for the exhibit and three of the 66 were from BHS students. Stanley Luce, Angela Rock, and Alicia Ebanks. The Brockton High School Drama Awards. Um, the Massachusetts Educational Theater Guild Annual Monologue Acting Scholarship. METG members' schools send their strongest seniors um, to compete for the scholarship. Brockton High sent our five outstanding seniors and two won awards. Zanasia Andre, second place. Zayana, I'm sorry. <laughs> Nikita De Rosa. Right, Honorable mention. <laughs> the New England Drama Festival state finalists. This year, 124 high schools competed at the preliminary level of the New England Drama Festival. The Brockton High School Drama Club production of Sweet Surrender was one of only 14 shows to be selected to compete at the state level. The cast and crew won accolades at all three levels of competition. This group of students work hard to put this wonderful show together, and they make us all very, very proud. I'll begin with the cast. George Carolinius. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, George. <laughs> Dante Lamar. Cole Analero. Jasmine Janes. Karina Katsiopoulos. Haley Deltano. Joseph Polvari. Nikita De Rosa, and I will try your name again, Zayana Andrade. I even got the last name right that time. Wardrobe design and the executive team: Amy Dung, Ashley Finn, Damani Williams, Kimberly Moise, Maya McKinnon. Olivia Wainwright, Ziona Bowden. The artistical design and technical crew, Aisha Goulon. Asante Martin. Caesar Natevitas. <laughs> Courtney Sullivan. <laughs> Daniel Corbett. Emily Goynette. Emily Kuchikenis. India Bethel. India Rosewald, Jasmine Janes, Kelly Locke, Kevin Martinez, Kiana Texera, May Sue Conde, Molly Sullivan, Montana Mendez. Nicholas Alvarez, Nicholas Cabrera, 
Olivia Thru, Rachel Hartford, Ronan Cords, Sean Jacko, Sophia Texera, Wesley Homer, and Alex Cords. And now I'd like to present Lieutenant Colonel Richard Clark, who will present the awards to the JORTC. Good evening. We would like to recognize our top four cadets who have been recently selected as the cadet leaders for our Junior RTC program for the remainder of this year and next. Junior RTC is a character and leadership development program. It differs from most other programs in the sense that cadet involvement is critical to, to its success. As such, our cadets are continually presented with leadership opportunities in which they can develop their interpersonal, problem solving, decision making, and communicative skills while simultaneously learning something about their own character. As the key leaders, these four will be given the enormous opportunity of leading and managing the program's administrative, operational, and logistical actions necessary to support school and community events. Their ranks and positions and names are as follows. Cadet Lieutenant Colonel Jack Pires, Cadet Battalion Commander. Uh, Cadet Anthony Morales, Cadet Executive Officer. Cadet Major Dylan Petronio, Cadet Operations Officer. and Cadet Command Sergeant Major Elizabeth Vicente, Cadet Command Sergeant Major. I will now be followed by our, our Athletic Director, Kevin Cairo. Thank you. everybody. It is my honor to present to you the outstanding athletes of Brockton High School, young men and women who have demonstrated skill on the playing field, but also scholastic aptitude in our classrooms. These young athletes have made us proud to be called the City of Champions, and I commend each of them. The following students have earned all scholastic honors and in football, Dimitri Dornville, Enterprise All Scholastic. Jalen Ellerby Cundiff, Enterprise All Scholastic. Jose Montero Jr., Enterprise All Scholastic. No junior tonight. AJ Walker Jr., Enterprise All Scholastic. Boys soccer, Herminio Furtado, who was our Boston Globes Division I Coach of the Year. Is Coach here? No? Okay. In no particular order, Junior Gomes Pereira, Boston Herald All Scholastic and Enterprise All Scholastic. Leonardo Texera, Boston Globe Player of the Year, Boston Herald. All Scholastic, Enterprise Boys Soccer Athlete of the Year, Enterprise All Scholastic, and last but not least, he was nominated for Gatorade Player of the Year. No Leo, okay. Claudio Mascarenas, Enterprise All Scholastic. Odier Montero, Enterprise All Scholastic. Mario Mendoza, Enterprise All Scholastic, not here. Jonathan Rodriguez, Enterprise All Scholastic. Okay, boys cross country. 
Demario Brown, Enterprise All Scholastic. Emmanuel Fernandez, Enterprise All Scholastic. Congratulations. Jordan Porter, nope, Enterprise All Scholastic. For golf, Nathan L. Shamey, Enterprise All Scholastic, not here. Our class president and our team captain, Amon Marion, Enterprise All Scholastic. Girls Cross Country, Nicole Dunbury, Enterprise Girls Cross Country Athlete of the Year, and Enterprise All Scholastic, and only a freshman. Sarah Bullock, Enterprise All Scholastic. Marlies Fernandez, Enterprise All Scholastic. Jerrica McLean, Enterprise All Scholastic. <laughs> Girls Soccer, Kayla Murphy, Enterprise All Scholastic. Congratulations. Tori Viola Lowry, Enterprise All Scholastic. Okay, for girls volleyball, I don't see you, but Ayanna Griffith, Enterprise All Scholastic. For field hockey, Leslie Cabrera Luna, not here. Rachel Cohen, Enterprise All Scholastic. <laughs> Boys basketball, Abu Kaba, who's not here, but he was a Boston Herald All Scholastic, Enterprise All Scholastic. Marcus Azor. Enterprise All Scholastic. You clean up pretty good. Sunny Okenlolo, Enterprise All Scholastic, not here. And then we go to our girls basketball team. I don't see her, but Annalisa Fernandez. Nope. Jade Wint, Enterprise All Scholastic. For ice hockey, Frank Ayton, not here. Zach Sylvia, I don't see Zach. Boys indoor track, Jalen Ellerby Cundiff, Enterprise Men's Track Athlete of the Year, and Enterprise All Scholastic. Nice to see you again. Javier Donegan, Enterprise All Scholastic. Jordan Williams, Enterprise All Scholastic. And also, Jordan's going up to represent Brockton High School up at UNH for the All New England meet this Saturday. Okay, girls indoor track. Julie Nwasu, Enterprise Women's Indoor Track Athlete of the Year and Enterprise All Scholastic. Nicole Dunbury, Enterprise All Scholastic. All right, I don't see Susan Tatang and Telma, they're not here. And Mackenzie Marginal, no. All right, we'll go to our wrestling team. Cole Wyman, is Cole, no, no Cole? All right, no Cole, but Cole was the Boston Globe All Scholastic Enterprise Wrestling Athlete of the Year and an Enterprise All Scholastic. And he was our captain. And joining him, Connor Gagney, Enterprise All Scholastic. And I see Aiden Wynn, Enterprise All Scholastic. And finishing up with our swim team, I see Morgan Finnegan, Enterprise All Scholastic. Diver, swimming and diving, shame on me. 
Courtney Sullivan, Enterprise All Scholastic. Okay. Thank you all for coming out tonight, and um, we'll see you in the fall when football and soccer kicks off. Thank you. Once again, thank you to all our award recipients and families. Congratulations to everyone. I'll call this meeting of the Brockton School Committee back to order, and we'll pick up at the top of the program with hearing of visitors. This is an opportunity for individuals to come in front of the school committee, the superintendent, and myself uh, to address us on any issue of concern. There's a three minute time limit, and there is um, no immediate response from the school committee. All matters are taken under advisement. And that being the case, we will uh, invite people up in the order that they signed in earlier this evening. So our first visitor will be Kristen Lakin. Hi, my name is Kirsten Lakin. My mother had me while she was a senior at Brockton High. She entered the Project Grads program where they not only assisted her education by providing childcare, but gave her the confidence and knowledge to become a successful parent. They were also a place of support so that she could see that she was not in this alone and she was not the only high school student going through this. As we all know, support is an incredibly important component through our teenage years. Project grads provided my mother with this, and the knowledge and courage to raise me into the person I am today. Today, I am a small business owner and graduated from UMass Dartmouth with a degree in psychology and women and gender studies. My mother continues to be an inspiration to me as she works on the school committee to ensure our youth receive the guidance and support they deserve and need. This program was an amazing sense of community for my mother and has been such for young mothers and fathers for 35 years. If just one student missed out on receiving their diploma because of this elimination, the cost to parent, child, and society will be far greater than your line item. Please preserve the Project Grads program. And then I'm also next for the representing. I'm reading this letter on behalf of Hao Win to whom it may concern. My name is Hao Win. I am a resident of Brockton, employee of Brockton Public School System, and mother of 2018 graduated BHS honor student and toddler who attended the BHS Little Boxer Daycare. I am deeply concerned to hear that Project Grads BHS Little Boxer Child Care may no longer be available to the students and staff. The program has benefited the community greatly. Over the past six years of my employment, I worked full-time and had one to two part-time jobs, continued my education part-time, and juggled being a full-time mother to my two children. When I had my youngest child, Mary Reed and the Project Grads BHS Little Boxer staff were an integral support system and part of the reason I had the ability to manage so many responsibilities. As a single adult mother, my daily responsibilities and activities are demanding and can be stressful. It is difficult to imagine the anxiety of taking on these responsibilities as an adolescent in high school. I have the benefit of working in the same department and seeing the level of care and involvement Ms. Reed and the staff members have with the student parents and their children. They extend and accommodate time and time again. I see a student parent speaking and confiding to Ms. Reed in the hallway. I see student parents come to check on their infants and toddlers when they are allowed. The staff decorate the doors during Christmas to spread smiles and uplift spirits. They constantly update their wall displaying thematic photos of all the infants and toddlers in the hallway. As a parent, it is a priority that one's child be close in proximity, nurtured and educated in a safe, spacious, and clean environment. I must have visited almost a dozen child care centers and Project Grads BHS Little Boxers is at the top of my list as a prefer preferred choice in program staff and facility. If this program is eliminated, it is disconcerting to imagine the unforeseen and unpredictable effects it will have on the student parents, children, staff, and community. Thank you.
Next up, we'll invite Hannah Lakin. Hi, I'm Hannah Lakin, and I'm reading a letter on behalf of Ms. Lauren Baker. To members of the school committee, my name is Lauren Baker, and I'm the assistant dean of the Yellow Building at Brockton High School. I'm writing this letter because of my grave concern that the Project Grads program may come to an end. I have had two children attend the Project Grads program, my son Dylan, who is four, and my son Lucas, who is two, and currently finishing his last month at BHS. Over the course of the four years that my pr children have been in Project Grads, I have been incredibly impressed with the quality of care my children have received. Mary Reed runs a stellar program that allows the collaboration of student parents, teacher parents, staff, and non-parent students who are enrolled in the program as their class. The student parents have role models in their teachers who, like themselves, bring their children to the daycare. The daycare allows our student parents to learn how to properly care for their children, affords them the opportunity to breastfeed as needed during the day, and fosters responsibility. The non-parent students who care for my children as part of their class continuously come to tell me how much they adore being in the daycare. This allows me to develop relationships with students I may not otherwise have had the opportunity to get to know. It also serves as an example for the students enrolled in the class to see just how difficult raising a child is as they get a small glimpse into the enormous responsibility that comes with being a parent. To cut a program like this would be hurting our most vulnerable population. These young ladies struggle greatly with their academics from the time missed from their maternity leave. Project Grads gives them a level of comfort and security knowing that their child is in the building, especially if the child suddenly becomes sick as young babies often do. They can focus on their academics feeling safe that at any time they can go over to the daycare to check on their baby if needed. I would be deeply saddened to see Project Grads cease to exist at the high school. It is hard to even predict the detrimental impact the loss could have on our students, teachers, and support staff that have come to love every aspect of this revered and well-established program. Respectfully, Lauren Baker, Yellow Assistant Dean. <coughs> the next letter is from um, a student who I know and am friends with, Corinne Cowden. Good morning, I'm Corinne Cowden. I go to Brockton High School and am a proud member of the first group of STEM students. However, I'm also a teen mom and a proud Project grad student as well. My amazing one-year-old son, Trayvon, attends the daycare. To my understanding, the daycare is in the first round of cuts. I would like to tell you why I believe it should be voted to stay. I hope you'll take my opinion and thoughts about this decision into consideration. I would greatly appreciate it. <coughs> Out of the many things that could be cut, Project Grads is not one that should even be considered. It has benefited so many teen parents, faculty members, and students who are looking into the child care pathway. It's more than just a program. It's a family. You may think that sending our children to a different daycare off school grounds instead of Project Grads will be the same, but I can tell you from experience that it won't be. Not having Project Grads takes away the feeling of a close bond between parents and, can and caregivers. I want to know the people who take care of my child. It also takes away the ability to see our children throughout the day, the support and care that not only the children receive but the parents too. Taking away Project Grads is like taking away a mother-like figure, food, and a safe place to many teen mothers who are a part of this program. I'm not sure if you have children yourself, but I'm sure you would have wanted them to have the best, most caring, amazing people taking care of them, as I do for my son. If it were decided to cut Project Grads, many teen parents would be forced to drop out, losing out on their education, opportunity to better themselves, and support their child in the future. Other daycares, sorry. <laughs> Other daycares not, will not supply us with formula, breakfast, lunch, snacks, blankets, clothes, etc. Many of us do not have the money or families to help support us. How are we to be expected to supply all of this when we are still children ourselves and are trying to find our way? I really hope you've taken what I've said into serious consideration. Cutting Project Grads will be taking a very important program from the Brockton High School community. Thank you for your time. I hope you will, will reply with your thoughts on the matter. Thank you again. Corinne Cowden. <clears throat> Our next uh, visitor to sign in is Laura McGee. Good evening. 
My name is Laura McGee and I'm in my 13th year in the Brockton Public School System and my also my 13th year at Brockton High School. My husband, Matt, is in his 16th year with the system, first working at the B.B. Russell, which is now the Frederick Douglass Academy, as you know, and now at Brockton High School. More importantly, we are parents to Megan and Luke. Megan is four, and she attended Little Boxer's Daycare for the first three years of her life before moving to preschool. My son, Luke, is one year old as of Sunday, and he is in his first year at Brockton High School's Little Boxer's program. To say that Little Boxers is an important part of our family is an understatement, but I'm not here to talk about my family. I'm here to convey to you the importance of continuing project grads. The motto in the Brockton Public School System is instructional excellence for every student every day. What are we teaching these teen parents by closing project grads? Is that instructional excellence? Do they matter? Their education, does that matter? That they don't deserve the same education as their peers? I understand that there's a cost associated with this program. I do not know the intri intricacies of preparing a budget for a school system. I cannot imagine having to make the decisions with which you are tasked. But please do not only consider the cost of continuing the program. Please continue, consider the cost of eliminating it. A perfect example of this is a young woman who was in one of my husband's sophomore classes last year. This young woman, upon discovering that she was pregnant, felt that her academic life was over. She stopped coming to school, fell behind on her studies and was planning on dropping out to get a job in order to support her son. However, project grads saved the day. Mrs. Reed worked diligently with the student and her mother. They discussed the options and benefits of coming to project grads and helped her see the assistance that the state could provide if the young woman remained in school. With this coaching and coaxing, the young woman decided to stay in school and put her trust in Mrs. Reed, the Brockton Public School System, and the project grads program. Not only has this young woman been able to continue to attend school, but she has rebounded in her studies and is on track to graduate with her academic cohort in 2019. None of this would have been possible without the Herculean efforts of the Project Grad staff. Cutting the funding for Project Grads would pull the rug out from under this young woman and many other students who are juggling their families and their academics, all while navigating their teenage years. The staff at Project Grads Little Boxers is nothing short of amazing. These women are caring, compassionate, professional and dedicated. They truly love what they do and our children are better for it. Please let them continue to make an impact on young lives the way they have impacted Megan and Luke. It is not just the professional staff that makes this program special. During the day, selected students can serve as volunteers assisting in each of the rooms. They gain valuable knowledge and forge relationships with the children that could lead them to a career in early education. We have been able to observe a different side of these students as we both have more than one of them in class. We enjoy hearing them tell stories of what Luke did while he played with them or watching him take one of his first steps. They ask how Megan is doing. Some of these students struggle academically or socially but have blossomed when participating in this program. Please vote to keep Project Grads Little Boxers open to serve the needs of so many members of this community. Please think of your own children or nieces or nephews or neighbors. You want the best care possible for them. Project Grads Little Boxers is the best place for these kids. We always say if our son can't be with us, Little Boxers is the next best place. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Laura. We'll invite up uh, Masha Malley, please. Good evening. My name is Marsha Malley, and I've worked at Project Grads for over 22 years. I'm a proud mother of four graduates of Brockton High, and I personally feel that Brockton, that Project Grads program is the best program at the high school. We are a supportive, nurturing, caring, and devoted staff that are concerned about our students and our babies. Project Grads is not just a daycare. Project Grads is a teen parent program. Our goal is to get the teen parents to graduate from high school. This past Saturday, six of our teen parents graduated, and their six children all had a great first educational experience. We are a family for many of these young families. We provide a safe haven. We care about these kids. They are Brockton public school kids. We meet the teen moms when they are when they are first pregnant and we support them until they graduate. The pregnant teens 
spends time in the child care learning about how to take care of a young infant before their own child is even born. Many of the teens will come into the daycare with a sick baby to ask Mrs. Reed, what should we do? They come to us for parenting help and advice every day. How would this work when our young children are in another location away from the teen moms? The teen will have no contact with their young baby all day long. I can tell you, I can tell you how this will work. The teen mom will stay home with, with the child and miss school. This is what we have worked so hard to avoid. These young parents are not adults yet. They need help to navigate the complicated system of child care and medical care for an infant. Most of our teens are in the program have very little adult support in their lives. Most are on their own to figure out how to balance full-time school while taking care of a young child. This is not an easy thing to do. Our program works. These teen parents come to school every day, all winter long, because of the support this program provides. Even when they're feeling overwhelmed and ready to give up, we talk to them, we support them, we help them. Our teen parents could choose to go to a different daycare now, but they chose to be part of the Project Grads program because of what it offers, that they, that offers of all the support that they need, supports that other local daycare centers may say they offer, but in reality, they do not. In addition to all that that we do for our teens and our young children, other students in Brockton High benefit from this program as well. In my child care room, I have several student helpers each period that come in to play with the young toddlers. Many Students have reported to me that being with the young, the young children is a, such a stress reliever and is the best period of their day. Teachers have told me that they cannot believe it when they see how good a challenging high school student can be with the young children. I had a student come to me upset the other day who asked just to stay in the daycare room and relax and calm down. We are a nurturing and safe environment, and many of the students in the high school appreciate and need that in their school day. This program does cost money. It costs money to educate children. This program is about helping the teens to see that they can still graduate from, from high school. This program is taking care of some of the neediest kids in Brockton. This program is providing young children from high-risk families with early learning environment that is loving, safe, fun, and educational for the first three years of their lives. These children will be, be, will be attending our Brockton preschool program in just three years. Yes, Brockton kids count. All kids count. The Brockton kids who participate in Project Grads program count. As a taxpayer, I'm horrified to think that you are thinking of closing this important program to save $116,000 out of a budget that is over $160 million. It's not right. Please reconsider changing or eliminating this program. It's a very successful program, and 100% of our parenting students are graduating. In closing, I just want to ask, why would you ever look at this program to save money? Thank you. Okay, next up will be Francis Jeffries. Thank you, everyone. And uh, I'm Speaking to you as a concerned citizen, a longtime friend of the Brockton Public Schools, a parent of one of your teachers, and a grandparent of a little boxer in the Project Grads program. These are difficult times for public education. As a school committee member and as mayor and a superintendent, you're asked to balance and choose the best and most valuable among many programs and options. One program, Project Grads Little Boxers, located at Brockton High School, could easily be overlooked. Program with a 35-year record of successful intervention and support 
with a modest annual budget, and my budget figures came from some public meeting notes, so if these are not accurate, forgive me, but I believe it's $225,000. I just heard another figure. Anyway, it's very modest. Merits and closer look. Project Grads Little Boxers offers support to students who become parents during their high school years. It also provides early intervention for the children themselves. There are many benefits, both fiscal and educational. But for now, let's do the math. Project Grads serves approximately 25 teen parents, mostly female students and mothers. Without this program, uh, the data confirm that more than 60% or about 15 of them would leave school. They would not be on your enrollment. They would not receive the foundation budget, which I believe is $11,730. It's a total of $175,950. The bottom line is the program ensures, as you've heard, that the students are retained in school which in turn has positive effects on the budget. Project Grads Little Boxer is also utilized by seven teachers and staff. The daily rate which they pay provides 15% of the total budget, or about $33,750. Project Grads has also sought and expects to receive external funding to support directly this program. The amounts of these grant awards are expected to be confirmed June 30th of this year. And the estimated total, as we heard before, is something like $25,000 to $30,000 or 14% of their budget. Additional funding opportunities, I'm sure, would continue to be sought. Bottom line, the program can generate part of its own funding. If you combine the loss of the 175950 with the income from the daily rate paid by teachers and staff, 33750 then the total is $209,700. That means that even in the short run and without including the possible external funding, eliminating Project Grad's Little Boxer from the 2019 district budget would make a net gain of $15,300. If the external funding is included, then those additional funds, 14% of the budget, and the community support that they represent would be lost. Some benefits of Project Grads Little Boxers have long-term outcomes, the direct results of which cannot be calculated in this year's budget, but which will have financial expenses and other long-term costs within the next five years. The project, uh, the little boxers will become your students. Project Grads Little Boxer meets explicitly at least four of the Brockton Public Schools goals to increase parent involvement, to promote student and staff wellness, support student achievement, and to pro provide positive and supportive learning and working environments. The evidence speaks for itself. Project Grads Little Boxer pays for itself. Eliminating it from the budget has negative consequences in the short and long term. The students graduate and have a much greater chance of continuing a successful path in post-secondary education and or employment and engagement in the community. Both the student, parent, young mothers and fathers, and the child are provided with the support and understanding of their own development they are encouraged in their parenting skills and individual growth at these critical stages in each of their lives. This is especially important because, as I said, within five years, the child will very likely be enrolled in the Brockton Public Schools. Little Boxers is a wonderful employee benefit for teachers and staff, making it possible for teachers and staff to, and students to form a unique sense of community as the children play together and the parents support each other. The added benefit of being housed together, eliminating extra travel or time away from the job or school cannot be underestimated. I would urge you to consider the return on investment, both for the short and the long-term fiscal decisions. The educational, social, and community benefits speak for themselves. Put down your red pencil continue to support Project Grads Little Boxers. 
Thank you very much. Okay, that completes our hearing of visitors uh, for tonight's meeting. We'll move on to the consent agenda. The consent agenda is a manner in which the school committee is able to handle an entire block of business, uh, matters of routine business in order to keep the meeting moving along and be more efficient. However, uh, any member of the school committee may request that an individual item on the consent agenda be withdrawn for separate discussion and deliberation. So at this time I'll ask if any of the members of the committee have any items that they would like to be removed from the consent agenda. Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion. Motion to accept the consent agenda. Okay, motion made, seconded by Mr. D'Agostino. All in favor? Opposed? The consent agenda is approved unanimously. So, uh, Superintendent, at this point, I'll uh, turn the meeting over to you for your report on teaching and learning. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, this has been a, a busy time of year. Uh, we've had wonderful things certainly happening in the schools, and I'd like to take uh, this moment to recognize Shama Arace. So Shama is our student representative, and for those of you that have been with us most of the year, what you see uh, is actually state law that allows a student to take part in uh, our school committee government uh, to actually you know have a voice to you know be part of the process and we were so pleased Shama when Dr. Uh, Cliff Murray uh, allowed you to come and uh, take on that role this year uh, you took it very seriously you were here for probably all of our meetings um, I'm sure you had other things going on you are a student that is involved in many many activities and you made this one of your priorities and I think it was very telling the other day when at the graduation, when Shama's name was called, and we take turns going up. We have over uh, almost 1,000 graduates, and every one of us got up. Um, and that was not planned. Uh, I think every one of us is so proud uh, of you, uh, of your commitment to uh, our school committee here. So we would like to congratulate you on, first of all, your graduation from Brockton High School. We want to thank you for all your efforts, and we wish you well as you head to Howard University. So on behalf of the mayor, myself, and all of us here, we would like to give you just a little something for the bookstore at Howard University. So this is for you, honey. I want to give you a big hug. Thank you. We're so proud of you. So Shama, this is your last hurrah. Did you want to give us an update or? Sure, they're mainly senior updates because I haven't been in school, as you guys know. <laughs> uh, we got to leave a little early, but thank you so much. And it was great seeing you guys at graduation, got to hug all of you. Um, and it was a nice day. It started raining a little afterwards, but it was still good throughout the whole ceremony. So for senior stuff, obviously we graduated, yay. Prom was amazing. It was so nice and fun. Gillette is beautiful. Many pictures were taken. Everyone seemed like they were having a great time. And there was an ice cream bar, which made it even better. The whole time I was just like, there was hot fudge. It was great. Um, and then there was an award ceremony, um, which went very well. And I saw a lot of my friends get awards that were um, separate and um, hear amazing things. Like, um, I know my friend got picked like out of the whole senior class by like the state, which was amazing. And, um, and before, well, after we left, MCAS took place, which was the last MCAS for sophomores this year which is great. And um, I remember some things that happened before I left. And one of the really cool things is that uh, a um, BHS graduate that went to med school came back to speak with um, med, like students that want to go to med school. And that was really informative and great. Um, she told us what she wanted to do. We were able to ask her questions about med school and her journey in college compared to what she's experiencing now um, as a second year med student. And um, she told her story and we had lunch. It was really great. Um, I know 
that someone is going to the same college that she went to, so they exchanged numbers. She gave us she gave us her email and said that we could contact her if we had any questions. So that was really nice. And um, the AP literature class had a poetry slam, which was so much fun. Um, I think as their final, they had to write their own poem and they went up and performed it. They did a great job. And then at the end, um, they invited other people to go up and read poems and it was really fun and great. And um, the BHS apprenticeship um, program had a graduation and that was a science apprenticeship, um, which gave students the opportunity to study in a lab, like do research, and um, I, I know that was a great opportunity because they also got paid for it, which is very helpful. <laughs> yep, and that's, that's my report. So Shana, are you set to go, or you know, you've left, you've graduated, wonderful yeah. day, as you said. Yes, it was great, and now summer's here. I know my cousin's still in school. She's like, I'm so jealous. I want to leave too. <laughs> well, we are all jealous. You will have a wonderful opportunity. Um, my daughter was actually visiting today from Washington, D.C. She went to American University many oh. years ago and has since stayed there. So I told her you'd be going to Howard, and um, she said to share information if you need anything. So we're going to feel like we're right there supporting you. Perfect. You'll have, uh, have us if you need us at any time, and we hope that you come back here and share with us. We know you will be a wonderful success. Thank you so, so much. So congratulations. Please join us. Also, uh, our school committee, um, this was just a wonderful year. And I do see Hannah out in the audience, uh, Lisa's daughter. We were very proud of her on Saturday, along with Greg Minicello. I don't know if we have other seniors out there, do we? Because you are just a wonderful class. We know there are going to be great things that all of you will do, and we really do congratulate you, and we stand behind all of you, and we look forward to hearing how wonderful you all do. So congratulations to the parents um, and, and all the support, certainly, that I'm sure you've had. So again, congratulations, and we'll be waiting to hear wonderful things, Shama. Thank you. Thanks again. Good job. So we don't have a long agenda tonight, you'll be happy to hear. We've had a very uh, busy few, uh, few months, I would say. I don't even want to say a few weeks. Um, one of the things I will tell you is today I was finishing up uh, on what we started this year at the beginning of the year was very different than our visits normally are in the schools. We go into the schools, we do our rounds, we have conversations, but this year, starting the year the way that we started, I felt very differently about what the visits would look like. We've brought our whole executive team from the Human Resource Office to Student Support Services to Chief Academic Officer. Aldo Petronio has joined us on a number of visits when we're talking about finances to support the school. Deputy Superintendent Thomas, you know, again, paying attention to safety, security, to building. So I will tell you today we went to the Davis School. Um, I, again, it was an excellent visit. We probably spent a good two hours talking about the successes, the challenges. And the one thing that I want you to hear that truly came across loud and clear, and I hear it across the city when we go to schools and have very honest conversation, is this was a very difficult year. But it is amazing to me to see everybody coming together from leadership teams to teachers to the support staff in the building. We walked in and the first thing we saw was this is one of our buildings where Deputy Superintendent Thomas was able to put um, an area where we have a side window. So if a parent is coming to drop off a lunch or dropping off something simple, it doesn't have to enter the building. And it keeps traffic. It really is important for safety and security. The parents love it because they also can see how safe it is that people are not entering the building if it's something, as I said, simple, simply as a drop off. Uh, we also have uh, in the doors the magnetic strips which allow you to keep the door locked. The magnetic strip is there. If ever the building is compromised, one of the things you would do is pull the magnetic strip away. The door can lock it very quickly. It isn't taking out a key and fiddling in a case where you might need to close the door very quickly. So these are things that we continue to learn as we look at safety and security in our buildings. Uh, also, I was very pleased to see we have uh, gardeners there. So if you have a chance, Mr. Gormley, I'm not sure if you've seen your Davis School garden, but the lettuce there looked wonderful today. I, well, it was, uh, I'm, I'm going to leave with some goodies to take home. It was, it was absolutely fabulous. 
Um, very pleased, again, with the instruction, with the support, and with the gains. So again, we're going to invite them to come early on. Early on, they would like October. But I'd like them to come and talk about you know, what they have put in place this year, uh, some of the things that they have certainly struggled with, but they've made it work. And this is what goes on, certainly, in all our schools. And I'm very pleased, as we come to the end of the year, that I would call that a, a complete success. So Shama has already shared with you. Uh, I did have an opportunity to also go to the senior prom. Um, Joyce Azak joined me that evening, June Sabe McGuire. We took our trip. We got there a little bit late because we had a finance subcommittee meeting. But it's interesting to hear you say the one thing that you see there, and I see this wherever I go, I'm not sure that you pick up on this, everybody is included. And when you see different things that happen in high school or cliques or, or a student that might have a special need, everybody was on that dance floor. Everybody looked absolutely beautiful. And the one thing that I have to share with the school committee and, and Shama to share with your classmates is when we were leaving, there was a gentleman who was security down on the first floor. And you don't, you know, you don't get up the escalator or the elevator unless you, you know, are obviously part of the class or somebody that is an invited guest and is, you know, security is very tight. And the one thing that he said to us is there are many, many high schools that have proms there. And every year he looks for the students from Brockton High. I love that he said you have the best fashion. So he obviously is looking in, and the guys as well as the girls, it was very obvious that, you know, it was wonderful. And he also said that you are all very polite, that he enjoys when the students from Brockton come, and they really do us proud as a community. So that is the class of 2018. That is your legacy. And I'm hoping that that will certainly continue for, for years to come. So again, I agree with you. For graduation, I want to thank uh, Dr. Murray and his entire staff. Because as we walked out and the mayor and I were commenting, we were hopeful about the weather. And you're right, Shama, we truly just made it through when that dark cloud came through. I was getting in my car and the raindrops were starting to fall. But when you walk onto that field and you look at what our facility department has done, when you look at you know, the beautiful Rocky statue, the park, the flowers, the, you know, the usherettes, uh, your teachers you know, there to support you, and then to see you all come on the field and how excited your family members are, it is a, and I've been to a lot of graduations, not Brockton High graduations, and this is just phenomenal. Um, it, it's a great day. Every student gets their time to be recognized. Um, and again, your, your you know, students just acted um, so scholarly and you know, excited about their special graduation day. And for that, we're so pleased we're able to do that. So again, congratulations to all our graduates and all our families. And uh, next, I want to uh, remind everybody about our supplemental calendar. So you have that uh, in front of you this evening. Um, what you have on there, and we finally, and it's taken a while, I know there were concerns uh, about the uh, half days. So the half days are our in-service days. There were not additional days. We finally, between our middle school, high school last year, we added high school days. We had added the past few years with our elementary days. So it's um, the supplemental calendar is there. I, I don't think you need to take a vote on it tonight if you'd like no. to take a look at it and, and see if there are any questions. Right, this is a first reading, so there's no action necessary tonight. Just an opportunity for the school committee to review the draft version of the calendar at this point. And also, um, I'd like to talk about our uh, dual immersion program. We have uh, a number, and you have that also, I believe, uh, in front of you. If not, I know Wanda has them. They will be in your packet uh, for this week. So you will see the activities. Um, we have a number of people visiting us from the um, Portuguese, I believe, consulate. There's a number of awards being given out for our uh, UNIDOS program. Um, tonight, we actually had the dual immersion lottery taking place. Uh, there's time for the uh, AMATA orientation. So all of the upcoming events uh, with the dual immersion program are there you know, for you uh, to review. I'm also pleased that uh, Kelly um, Jones has shared with me that we just received a $7,000 donation from the French consulate to pay for teams to work on the uh, AMATA implementation for next year. Um, she also is applying for $1,000 in books for uh, a classroom library for the uh, French side of the AMATA program. And we also are applying for a $10,000 FACE Foundation grant 
to purchase uh, leveled libraries for both grades one and two of the uh, AMA-TA program uh, and send staff to uh, one of the um, conferences, the uh, MABE conference on dual immersion next year. So as you can see, our bilingual department is very busy uh, getting ready to um, you know, pull activities, parents, meetings, et cetera, to talk about the creation of our global studies school. Also, I think you have this evening your um, version of the state of the schools. And it's interesting because I think our first presentation um, back a number of years ago had you know, some information from the departments. And one of the things we wanted to highlight this year, and this will be given out to our city council tomorrow evening, is we've added um, not just our departments where you can see what has happened in every department, what are the successes, what are the challenges, but every one of our schools has a page. So our schools took a lot of time. Uh, you can look at the format where, again, we've got wonderful pictures of the activities, you know, things happening with our students, um, many of the unique programs to each of the schools. Um, I have to say uh, so myself that it really is uh, impressive, and if people are really looking you know, to see what is happening, you know, our challenges as well as our successes. So this is something that, as I said, we will have available to those that want them. Um, we also have our new marketing brochure, which also talks about um, all of the things happening uh, in the Brockton Public Schools. We'll be making sure that parents have these, especially if they're making selections of where they want to send their schools. When you uh, listen to Shama talk about everything happening at Brockton High School, when you see the calendars of events, check our website out for what's happening at our middle schools. I can't imagine you would choose another school for your children. Uh, tomorrow evening uh, at 6.30, I think we will be a little later. We are going before our city council for our city council um, presentation or budget hearing, actually. Is that correct, Mayor, budget, budget hearing? Yeah. Yep. So we will be there uh, tomorrow evening. And to finish up this evening, I also want to um, give some uh, kudos to our art department for their faculty and student awards. Uh, last week, I had the opportunity to go to the Brockton Public Library and to actually actually see our faculty's artwork on display, which is, is just amazing, the people that are teaching our students. And then I went downstairs to the children's library, and you had, again, uh, grades K through 8, it is amazing, I, was, I am not an artist in any way, but looking at some of the kindergarten students' work, it is just phenomenal. And when we look at tonight, the numbers of awards that we give out, it is not a surprise when we have touched on their music, when we've touched on the art, or you see our drama students up there with the awards this evening. So uh, this, again, is a thank you to our faculty and a congratulations to our students. We also had the Pops concert uh, last week. Um, it probably was the best concert I have ever attended uh, at Brockton. You had um, a special presentation by our chorus with um, the uh, fellow uh, Matt, Cunningham's, Matt Cunningham's friend who I believe works at Providence College and was able to put together a composition. He has a son who's an uh, autistic child and he was able to put together a, a beautiful uh, composition which our chorus sang and performed. Uh, we also had uh, a special performer, and I'm going to forget his name. He is, I believe, Chris Vadala, who came and performed with our advanced concert band. Um, it was just, just an excellent, excellent uh, Pops concert to, to end uh, just a, a terrific year for our students. We also had uh, the Alumni Awards Ceremony, which our alumni group is really growing. And as we think about Brockton High School, and I've started to think about as we look at the possibility eventually of a new Brockton High School or a renovation of our Brockton High School, we've probably graduated over 50,000 students. So those students, you want them to come back. You want them to always be a part of the Boxer family. And they had an event the other evening where they highlighted uh, Amy uh, Friedman Corum, class of 71, uh, Greta Zak Zakuskate and uh, Jan Sharkansky Singer, and she's class of 82. Uh, Greta was class of 11, uh, one of our young alumni. So this is something that they'll continue to do every year. They had about 100 people present. I know Dr. Murray uh, was one of the MCs there. They, uh, I was not able to attend. It was an excellent evening, um, and Jan Sharkansky Singer 
I know uh, personally uh, is now the CEO of Victoria's Secrets and I had her as a cheerleader here at Brockton High School back in 1982. So she was a terrific girl and I'm so proud that she was given one of the awards. And of course our own Amy Corum who is con continually dedicated to what's happening in the Brockton Public Schools and our community. So congratulations to all of them. And I will uh, finish up the evening with uh, another award. Uh, I was notified last evening that uh, June Sabre McGuire is the Athena Award recipient for 2018, and that is being awarded by the Metro South uh, Chamber. Uh, this is an award given out every year for um, someone who supports other women and helps them to achieve uh, greatness or promotes them in their career or in their efforts. Uh, I think June was a wonderful choice. Um, many of you know June, June is presently our chief academic officer, but for many years she worked in a number of different schools, uh, most recently as principal of our turnaround efforts at the Huntington School. I know she very proudly encourages teachers. I see Principal Mary Beth O'Brien out there, uh, who June had encouraged from the time she entered teaching in the Brockton Public Schools. So um, this is something that she will be honored on Friday the 15th uh, at a luncheon. Um, June is here this evening. I hope you join me in congratulating June. <laughs> and Mayor, the only other thing uh, I have to refer to subcommittee is um, continuing with our finance subcommittee meetings. I know Wanda is working with everybody on a date so we can have everybody present. Thank you. All right, so Wanda will work with Tom and the committee on the next finance subcommittee date. Anyone else have anything they'd like to refer to a subcommittee? Let's we'll keep focused on the budget for right now. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. That well, set. That's you it. Sure? I'm Nothing sure. Else? Told you, you early, early yeah. night. All right. <laughs> um, an unfinished business, we have the FY19 uh, budget discussion and the finance subcommittee report for May 29th. The report was accepted by the committee as part of the consent agenda. Um, I'm gonna postpone discussion on the report because of the absence of the vice chair, Mr. Minicello. So we will, um, the report is, every, the members of the committee have the report, it's been accepted. Okay, what's that's letter not, E? That's the May 29th policy. Oh, that's oh, policy, so it's not been accepted. I'm sorry. Yeah. Correct that. May 24th finance was accepted. Correct. All right, well, in either matter, I'm going to postpone it till the next meeting in deference to the fact that the vice chair is absent. Okay. Uh, under new business, anyone have anything under new business? All yours, Judy. Right, it's May 29th finance. I misspoke. Oh, finance. Okay. I misspoke. So we're just going to postpone action on it altogether to the next meeting in deference to the fact that the vice chair is not here. Okay. All right. So now on to new business. Anyone have any new business? If I don't hear any, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion made and properly second. All in favor? Meeting adjourned. Thank you.